In Creo Parametric, you can manually create a cable spool for routing a harness. Let's take a look at how you do that. Here I am in cabling mode. I have my active work harness. To create a new spool, you can go to the spools command. This will open up the menu manager. First, I'm going to choose edit to show you that I have a number of spools already. I have some individual wire spools. I have a ribbon spool that has 15 conductors and another cable spool that has five conductors in here. But let's take a look at how to create your own cable spool. I will cancel out of the electrical parameters dialog box. To create a new one, I will choose create. And then we have our different types in here. And this is going to be a cable. Now it prompts me for the name. I'm going to create a CAN bus harness. Just like to be all capitals. Hit the enter key. And here I am in the dialog box. We have a few different uh, columns already set up in here. So we have our name. The type is prefab. That indicates a cable. Here we have a default thickness value, which I'm going to change, and a default minimum bend radius. Our units are the same as our model. They are in millimeters. And the color is not defined. Right now, we don't have any number of conductors in here because we don't have the column displayed and we don't have a value set for that. Let's add some more columns in here. To do that, I will go to View and then Columns. And one of the most important ones, again, for the cable definition is this num conductors. Let's add that in here. And I'm going to use the arrows to move it up near the top because it is so important. And here we have a number of other different parameters that we could add in here if we wanted to use them. And so, for example, let's say that I want to account for the mass of my wires and cables. In order to do that, I need to have a density assigned. And be aware that this is a linear density. In other words, you're going to specify the weight per unit length. In this case, my model is in millimeters. And based on the thickness of the cable, that's how it would calculate the weight of the object. And you might want to have mass units in here as well. So this is good for my columns. I'll click the OK button. Here we see that number of conductors is non-existent. I want you to pay attention to what happens over here after I set a value. And I'm going to simulate sort of like a military grade version of a CAN bus harness. So let's change the value from non-existent to 5. And I'll hit the Enter key. And now all of a sudden we got this little arrow that we could use to expand. Then we have conductors. And I can expand this over here and fill in the values for the individual conductors. Let's first off change the values for the other parameters in here for the cable itself. So for the thickness, I'm going to make this about 2.5 based on the number of conductors and how they're going to be laid out in there plus some uh, insulation. For the minimum bend radius, as a minimum, I usually use two times the thickness and we have our millimeters in here. For the color, let's use the drop-down list and choose what it's going to be. And I'm not going to fill in density uh, or mass units because I don't have the linear density for that yet. To fill in the values for the individual conductors, you can choose conductors. You'll notice that there are fewer columns in here by default. Just like before, we can go to View Columns to add additional columns. So for example, here we have a density, but I'm just going to use the overall density for my cable itself. If I want to, I could also put wire gauge in here as well. Let's click the OK button. And a bunch of these are going to be the same wire gauge, so they'll have the same thickness and same minimum bend radius. I don't have to enter them one by one. I can click on multi-select here and then enter in the value. And this is going to be 20 AWG. And when I hit enter, you'll notice that all of them take on the value. Let's do the same thing for the thickness. And the thickness in millimeters for this is 0.8128. Hit the enter key, and again, that gets filled in here. And once again, let's do the multi-select for the minimum bend radius and just doing some quick math. Hit the enter key and that plugs in those different values. But we want to have different names 
for the individual conductors and different colors. So let's call this the can V. And the next one where it's going to be the can high. Then we'll have our can shield. Then our can low. And finally the ground. And a lot of times people just leave them as numbers in there, but you can be as detailed as you want. Now, honestly, I usually use uh, schematics in order to generate my cables just because you can have more control over how it is being built. So let's go and change our colors in here. Let's see the shield. Ah, the shield will also be gray. And then we have our low, that's going to be green. And finally, our ground, which is going to be black. And so now I have all the individual conductors defined. Let's go back to connections. Everything is good in here. So I'm happy with my CAN bus cable spool definition. I will click the OK button and then done return. Now let's take a look at routing this in here. When I do routing, I like to change to a center line display. Let's now click on route cables. And in the route cables dialog box, you have a search tool that you could use if you are bringing in an XML file from a schematic. You could create individual wires or a ribbon cable, but we are creating a new cable. And so here we have the different uh, conductors for the cable because right now it's set to the spool called cable. Let's use the drop down list and choose the one that we just defined. And there we can see all the different conductors with the names that were assigned. Turn on our coordinate system visibility. We've got a few different designated connectors in here. And right now our from collector for the two is designated. One of the reasons that I don't use manually created cable spools a lot is that I generally prefer to do pin to pin wiring. I get a little overboard in my details uh, when I'm doing cabling. But if you're just routing a single big sheath going from one location to the other, then it's fine to use manual cable spools. And in this case over here, I'm just going to select the entry coordinate system over here. And then for the two connector, let me zoom in over here and see if I can see the entry over there. And right now we are in simple route and you can see that just goes from point A to point B. All the individual conductors are showing up as red, but if I click the apply button, it's going to end up throwing the cable in here. Let me hit cancel and then expand the harness in the model tree. And there's the cable that I just created. And the symbols next to them in the model tree indicate that they're all routed successfully. If I click the route command from the mini toolbar, here you can see that everything is fine in here because all the individual conductors are set to run from entry to entry. Let's cancel out of here. And now I want to refine the routing a little bit. Let's turn off our coordinate system display. And to add in some other additional paths, let's... First, I'm going to turn on my axis display. So then we can select on the connector, or excuse me, the cable, and then right click and choose insert locations. And I'll start off by selecting on the axis going through the middle. Just make sure that's coming out of the cable a little straighter. And then for the next location, let's pick on here, and then it gets adjusted. I'll right click and choose next location, use direction, one of my favorite methods. And that way we can have it going out straight over here. Let's say I'm routing it around the back. Right click, next location, change back to on and pick about over here. And then right click, next location, use direction. Again, one of my favorite techniques. And have this go out straight. And I like use direction because it sort of simulates if I was actually had my clamps in here right now that I was routing in between them. And then let's do a couple of on locations. Let's do about over here. And then let's say it's like going up on the wall and over there. And last one, let's throw in one last use direction. And yeah, that's good enough. And hit the check mark. And now I have the cable routed. 
Let's change from the center line to the thick cable display. And we can see it how it is in here. Maybe not going in as straight as I want. So we can again go back to the center line display, select on the cable, insert locations, and use the coordinate system. Again, just make it nice and pretty coming in there. Hit the check mark and go back to thick cables. And now I have my custom manual cable spool created and routed inside of my harness and assembly. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.